um, 11.03, I'm calling the meeting to order. Today's Elyria Planning Commission meeting, um, January 5th at 11.04. So first off, Happy New Year to you all. And um, we have a really busy agenda today. So I'm actually um, going to be moving some things around on the agenda um, so that we can get through this meeting in a way that we're not holding people up for long discussions. So, um, uh, uh, Jim, should I make a motion to amend the agenda or just? No, I, I don't think okay, you have to. Do fine. That. All right, so let's do a, go ahead with roll call. Tom Aiden. Here. Sam Battle. Absent. Barry Hubbard. You did. Here. Oh, Sam's here. He's muted. He's on the screen. He's just muted. Okay. I don't see Sam. This is Sam's iPhone. Oh, if that's Sam. Okay. So we'll, we'll see if that's Sam. But Barry Hubbard? Here. Chad Schneider? Here. Uh, Don Calvert? Here. And Mayor Whitfield here. And Derek Tedrow? Here. Awesome. All right, so Sam, we'll see if Sam can get his uh, device unmuted, and if that's Mr. Battle. Um, but first on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from December 1. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Moved by Mr. Schneider. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Tedrow. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, we have no miscellaneous correspondence, new or old business. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to move some stuff around on the agenda. We're going to start with uh, SRAM signs uh, as the first piece on the agenda. And this is a request for a waiver of the design review guidelines for the installation of signage. Uh, the design review guidelines indicate signage should be designed to integrate into the overall architectural style of the building and consist of individual letters. The proposed signage consists of channel letters and cabinet sign. Um, Dean, do you want to give us some background on, on this project? Let's you get you unmuted. Yourself. Let me get you unmuted. There you go. Right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know I had to click it. Um, so the sign is for the Hunan King restaurant. And the situation that they have is they have an existing box sign. And pursuant to the city rules, we are allowed to put a new face in that sign. But I know that the city has always wanted to go with upscale sign. But there's some information that they need that just can't all be channel letters. And so we normally, in every city I work in, 50, 60 cities a year, we make a secondary contour type bubble sign. Now, Leary does allow bubble type signs if they're within 30 inches, 30 inches tall square but it's too small to get what we need across. What we're trying to get across obviously is Chinese restaurant and the phone number. If they can't have this, they're gonna go with a face and that's low scale. That's an old sign, it's a new face, but this is way better for the city of Elyria than to get this. And I think it should be where you guys allow this box sign. It's very small, it's a contour sign, what we call it, it's got rounded corners uh, there, there, you can see it greatly. So you can see their old sign and that thing's been up there for 15, 20 years. And we can refurbish it and paint it and put a flat face on there, but it's really not making the city of Illyria upscale. And throughout the years, it's always been, hey, we wanna get channel letters. We wanna make it more upscale. And so that's the situation. But the city does allow a reface, but I would rather sell them a brand new set of channel letters uh, with this tagline, Chinese restaurant with the phone number. They're a delivery service, so the phone number is huge. They get a lot of calls for that. I mean, a Chinese restaurant has to have their phone number. I don't think it's terrible. It's a good layout. It looks great to me. Um, and so I'm hoping you give me the guy the little bit of waiver to allow that bottom sign to be allowed. Thank you, Dean. Uh, staff report, uh, uh, Director of Community Development, Ashley Scott, can you give the uh, staff report? Uh, yeah, so Dean did a pretty good job explaining uh, what the proposed signage is going to look like. The zoning is compliant. 
Um, the channel letters are compliant with our guidelines. However, a waiver is going to be needed for that tagline. Uh, I do recommend approval on that because it is a tagline um, and there are going to be new channel letters installed. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Any questions from the uh, committee? Um, uh, any, uh, uh, so, so this isn't a proponent opponent sort of thing, right, Jim? This is just a straight up and down vote, correct? Technically, someone could object. I, I would ask. I don't think it has Are there to any be objections done. to the signage, uh, the, the request for the variance? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiver of design review guidelines. Mayor, is Sam on so we don't have to give a warning that we only have six votes? Is he actually there? Mr. Battle, I'm here. You... I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, yep, we, we, we have a full committee. I just didn't know whether we had to give the admonition that we only had six. We have a full committee. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm listening on my phone. Thanks. Awesome. Sam. Thank you, Mr. Battle. So um, thank you for that, Mr. Taylor. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiver for the design review guidelines for the installation of the signage of tram signs by Hunan King. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Schneider. Is there a second? Second, okay. Battle. Second by Mr. Battle. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And were there any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Good luck, Dean. Thank you very much. And I wanted to say uh, congratulations, uh, Mayor Whitfield, for being elected. I didn't want to say it beforehand. I have never met you before. It would make it look like I was sucking up to you. <laughs> we like just sucking up for the next job. You know, what I'm but congratulations. And I, everybody who doesn't know me, I'll see you guys later and have a great day. Right, thank, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, next, we have um, two public hearings. Um, let me check my notes to make sure that's correct. But I, the first one I see is Express Wash Concepts, 4543 Northridge Road is their business uh, address. But the request is for a rezone of parcel number 0624-032-103-036 located at 621 49th Street, Elyria, Ohio, from Business Neighborhood District to Business Automotive District. Um, is there someone from Elyria Wash Concept on the call? Yes. Hello, Jason Hi, Fenton, Jay. Director of Development. How are you? Good, good. You want to give us some background on this project? Sure. Um, yeah, after speaking with staff um, and uh, figuring out uh, there's kind of a gives you the flavor of the tenor of, um, of our redevelopment. Uh, it is uh, consists of the um, old BP that's now a car dealership and the, uh, the parcel in the rear. Uh, which is um, the parcel that uh, needs to be rezoned to the B um, Automotive, BAO, uh, then would um, we will get a uh, lot consolidation moving forward. But uh, this would allow our use to uh, cover that parcel. Um, you could see there in the slide kind of where it is in relation to uh, 90 and Lorraine Boulevard. Um, if you want to slide down a little bit more. So there's the old and then that would be the proposed there, the new. Our building's roughly 3,700 square feet. Um, you could see the uh, the queuing, and it comes in the back through the tunnel, which is about a 120 foot tunnel, uh, and then comes back out um, on the Griswold uh, uh, there. So the the rezoning would allow our use uh, to span uh, both parcels. Um. Okay, I was going to ask Ren to pull up a map uh, uh, to to see, but I'm getting somewhat familiar with where this lo is located, but. Um, I'm still trying to pull a map up just so we can put it right, right there, right there you go. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason that doesn't help me. Um, it's on the side over by the, where the old closed McDonald's is, if that gives you any reference off of Griswold. The Arby's used to be there, Mayor. Oh, it's down more. That it's was down more, but that, big that's, big the, big that's, big the, that's the, that's yeah, the, can you pull up that address on the map, please? All right, so as Ren is pulling that up, um, uh, staff report, uh, Mr. Farkas, Chief Building Official, Cheryl, and Zoning Administrator. Thank you, Mayor. The request, the proponent is requesting the parcels listed herein be rezoned from business neighborhood to business automotive oriented district to accommodate a proposed car wash. Findings, 
Address 621 49th Street, parcel number 0624 032 103 036, and address 620 Griswold, parcel number 0624 032 103 038. The proposed car wash was a uh, <coughs> preliminary plan submitted indicates the incorporation of two parcels of land listed herein. The parcel's last three digits, 038, are currently zoned business, automotive, oriented district. I have listed the zoning requirements for each district for the board's use in efforts of clarifying the purpose of the specific zoning classifications. BN, business neighborhood district, the requirements of which can be found in the Elyra codified ordinance chapter 1156. It is the purpose of the business neighborhood district to permit and encourage the establishment of small convenience businesses, personal service businesses located in close proximity to residential areas which they are serving. The location of the business neighborhood district and nature of, <clears throat> of the limited commercial activity should be developed to avoid traffic congestion for the surrounding residential neighborhood area. Principally permitted uses are child care facilities, clubs, educational institutions, financial institutions, neighborhood retail business, non-commercial recreation, offices, personal services, religious places of worship, restaurants, provided the seating capacity is limited to no more than 20 people, and any other use determined by the building inspector to be of the same general characteristics as the above permitted uses. Business automotive. Business automotive oriented district, the requirements which can be found in the Elyria codified ordinance section 1162, the purpose of which is to accommodate and encourage those businesses established are offering accommodations, services and goods to the public. The business automotive oriented district is most appropriately located adjacent to freeways, interchanges, intersections, and major thoroughfares. The principally permitted uses include automotive filling station, automotive repair, services, automotive sales, convenience businesses, drive-in facilities, fast food restaurants, off-premise signs, restaurants, etc. Findings continued. Per the Elyra codified ordinance definition, section 11, 25.62.1 defines a car wash as a motor vehicle cleaning facility, of which specifically means a facility whose sole purpose is either to manually or automatically operate, is to clean the interior or exterior of automobiles, vans, trucks, except truck tractors and any other commercially licensed vehicle over one ton capacity. As a proposed car wash with, <clears throat> is next akin to a driving facility, the proposed use meets the intent of the code as indicated. Staff recommendations. It should be noted the proposed use car wash is indicated to cross over and be incorporated into parcel number 0624-032-103-038. A lot consolidation is needed as this will establish one new parcel and address are assigned to the site. It should also be noted the request is for a rezoning of the parcels only and does not include any other zoning review governing setbacks, structure heights, parking, screening regulations, dumpsters, signs, and possible variances needed, et cetera. The above information complies with the spirit and intent of the zoning code and also maintains the integrity of the abutting zoning districts. In closing, I am in favor of this request. Thank you, Mr. Farkas. Any questions from the committee on this? I think I got a much better understanding now. It's across the street from Bigby. If you had just said Bigby, I would have got it. Yep. <laughs> so I understand totally now. Any questions uh, from the committee? And I think Mr. Farkas alluded to that when it comes time for, um, uh, you know, the, the, there will be another process of design review. This will come back to us again once we get to that phase. Uh, but this is just to allow this area to be zoned for this sort of use. All right. Are there any other proponents? Are there any other proponents? Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Any opponents? All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the request to rezone uh, the said parcels. Uh, so move. So move. Make, it, make, make it subject to the lot consolidation, which obviously the owner doesn't object to. Subject to the lot consolidation. Is that okay, uh, to, Chad? Let me finish reading off the, the um, the request. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the rezone for the said parcels, parcels from business neighborhood district to business automotive district subject to a lot consolidation. So moved. 
Moved Second. by Mr. Aiden. Second, Schneider. Second by Mr. Schneider. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All aye. those opposed, nay. And were there any abstentions? All right, motion carries. Good luck, Jason. Thank you, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, next on the agenda is uh, Dominic and Courtney Price. Uh, and this is for a request for a conditional use permit for the use of a type A in-home childcare program. Uh, hi, Ms. Courtney, do you wanna share some information about this project? Hello, um, just briefly, I have been in a childcare business for the last two years. Um, the most recent two years we reside, we were residing in Lorain County, I mean, not in, in the city of Lorain, which they do not require for us to zone to operate as a childcare home. We just most recently moved to Elyria where I learned where um, I called Mr. Farkas and requested zoning information is where I learned that we had to um, apply for a conditional use permit to operate our home as a type B as well as a type A. So my goal is to expand to a type A so that I can hold the capacity of more than six children at one time. Um, I do want to request that um, per the note that was sent in the email with the information reviewed that wow. this scenario be viewed as a child care home and not child care facility when considering the square footage of the current lot and the side and front setbacks. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Farkas. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, the request, the proponent is requesting a conditional use to accommodate a proposed type A child care facility. Note, this site is currently being utilized as a type B childcare facility prior to approvals. Staff findings. The site is currently zoned residential medium density district, the requirements of which can be located in chapter 1144 of the Elyria codified ordinance. It is a purpose of a residential medium density district to establish and maintain a high quality areas within the city for homes with a medium population density to preserve the existing residential neighborhoods characterized by single household residences. The principally permitted uses are as follows. Agricultural, provided that such use is limited to non-commercial farming of crops and non-commercial animal husbandry, educational institutions, non-commercial recreation, religious places of worship, and single household detached dwelling units. RMD conditionally permitted uses. Section 1144.04. Oh, Daryl, um, I, 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 sorry to interrupt you. I just, are you about to read both of these paragraphs? Uh, I'm going to go through what is per conditionally permitted. Yes. Um, and both uh, conditionally, this RMD and the next paragraph. You're about to just read all this? Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spend everybody's time on this. Well, on ma that. Mayor, because you have the general public out there, I think you have. The, to these do. documents have been provided. Oh, all okay. Night. Okay. Yeah, this is all. That's why I don't want to just rehash if folks are prepared or not. If we could kind of go to the, you know, summary of your recommendation and and, um, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um. Um, I'll, I'll just jump down to the basics with, with the board's permission. You have obviously read the requirements of what's permitted, uh, the standards that have to be met to allow a conditional use. Uh, I'll ask the board that they consider each of those to see if the request meets the mark. And in closing, after consideration of the above items, staff recommends the petition be denied due to the potential adverse effects of the surrounding residential, residential homes for the items listed herein. So with that, it may be taken out of context with not all having privy to the previous information that I have written. Yeah, the expectation is all our commission members have read the materials prior to this meeting. So any questions from the commission members, specific questions you have for Mr. Farkas about uh, why he's recommending uh, denying the request? I have one. Is it a traffic issue? Mr. Farkas? Is, is that question for me or for Mr. Farkas? Uh, for Mr. Farkas. Okay. Um, part of the report does govern uh, traffic concerns as one of the requirements of the conditional approval. It says in order to ad minimize adverse impact on surrounding residential properties, 
Uh, they should be placed to the extent possible uh, for the residential district to avoid any area or mar major artery. And this is in regards to pick up, drop off, where people park, where they pull in. Uh, it is geared to avoid just that. Thank uh, you. Ms. Price, do you wanna to speak to those concerns? And then Mr. Hubbard, I'll go to you. Yes, um, as, as I explained in the letter I submitted, we do have staggered pickup and drop off times. So uh, although I do not, plan to operate at the capacity of having 12 children at one time, there shouldn't be at any point where anyone should have to park on the street or cross the street to be able to pick up and drop off their child successfully. Um, he also mentioned in the review the extended driveway, which I did email Mary a copy of the 2015 plat map that showed that drawing on there. But we have an extended driveway that holds more than six cars. So that's also a precaution that I kept in mind before applying for this so that people that are coming in and out do have a place to park in our property. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Hubbard. I guess I have a couple of questions. Um, it looks, if, if I'm looking at the map correctly, this is directly or almost directly off of Ford Road. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That is correct and just kind of down the street from the old Walmart? That is correct. Okay. Um, do you, uh, this would be for either either you or perhaps Mr. Farkas, uh, the neighboring properties outside of this development, are they, is that whole area residential or are we very close to the edge of a residential uh, commercial boundary? Uh, I can answer that. The current location of Regency Court was specifically geared for residential uh, improvement in mind. The surrounding properties, some are in township. Uh, the nearest location, as you mentioned, would be Walmart, which is, of course, is a, a commercial atmosphere. Um, but this particular area is specifically residential. Okay, and then we're looking at a difference between under a type B, we can support up to six children and a type A would be up to 12. Is that, am I reading that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Per, the, per the definition of the building code, that is where I draw my information for what is a type A and B just for the board's use. I mentioned it in my report to give context of the numbers permitted and the potentiality of children and vehicles per, per child, um, which rolls into my recommendations of location. And is this going to be a separately, uh, it, it, are you only going to operate the daycare out of this uh, house or would the idea be both that you live in the house and that you operate basically a daycare out of your home? It'll be, uh, wait, can you restate that question? I, I guess my question is, are we talking about a separate daycare that's in a residential community or is this a daycare that you operate out of your house that you're because living in as well? This is a daycare that I operate in outside of out of my house. I mean, not outside, out of my house. I have a fully finished basement that I use and I have a separate entry that goes out, comes in and goes out of the side of the house that is exclusively for the daycare that goes down into the basement. And I have a question for Mr. Farkas. How have we handled daycares, other daycares in the city, in-home daycares? Uh, oh, I'm not muted. Uh, typically, when these come in, a special inspection request is submitted to see if it uh, meets the marks of all the zoning requirements. Uh, typically, most do not due to the regiments required as listed in my report. Uh, it's very difficult to establish these. Most commonly, these are placed in a commercial atmosphere due to the specific requirements of the zoning. Um, and as in residential, it, it's not saying you can't do it. It's just saying you have to meet very specific criteria, uh, as mentioned in my report, that hit substantially the mark of what is needed to do this. Um, so I, I guess I'm referring to the ones that are currently exist in the city. Um, I will leave that to Mr. Mandok if he's on, uh, as he typically governs these as part of the state requirement inspections from a, a, a fire department standpoint. A lot of these are existing non-conforming that may have been put in prior to any type of approval process. I was going to say, to my knowledge, there's only one other type A. 
So I don't know if that speaks to that question at all, um, but I didn't even think that this was a common thing that people went for because there was only one. Where's that at, Courtney, if I may ask, the one you're referring I, to? I believe it's on Overland Avenue. It's a home. I don't know the lady's uh, personal information. I just know from in the child care community, we can do a child care search. And so one day I just searched the list for other type A's in the city of Valeria and there was only one. Okay. I, I, is that a commercial facility or a residential home? It's, it's a residential home. And my apologies. I said Overland Avenue. It's, okay. it's actually Overland Street. Overland Road. Overland, Overland Road. Road. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it didn't ring a bell. I just thank you. I just want my to apologies. No, no. Uh, this is Battle. Can I ask a question? Please. Uh, uh, is there have have there been an inspection for daycare from the Ohio Department of Job and Families or anything like that for a type A? For a type A, no. In order for us to uh, to apply for a type A license, we have to do all of this first. We have to request zoning information first. We have to have fire marshal visit first. And we also have to have the building official letters first before we can even submit an application. And then okay. once we submit an application and pay the fee for reapplication of license, then they come in and check your, your household. When you say they, the, the uh, Ohio Department of Job Services, my Family. apologies. Yes. Okay. And now another question I have: uh, Will you have volunteers or any type of staffing if you go beyond six? Yes, the state requires for us to have a an additional staff if we have more than seven. Okay. Do you do background checks on uh, staffing and volunteers? Yes, it is state required. I usually don't use volunteers, but as a state requirement, we have to, for hiring staff, we have to have each person FBI and BCI background checked. We also have to have them current on all health and safety trainings prior to them being able to be around the children. And what is the age group that you really deal with in daycare? From birth to about four, right now, four, because of schools and other facilities being closed due to COVID. Um, usually around the early preschool age is where I kind of stop. I don't make that a cutoff limit, but for the main time of the day, during the day, eight to five period, it's usually birth to about age of four. Other times, if I have afternoon or evening care or even weekend care, of course, those go into older ages. The state allows us to keep children up to the age of 12. However, I haven't gotten any children that that old yet, but they do allow us to keep children up to the age of 12. Now, will you do any transportation with those kids or the parks is down the street there? Will you do anything like that? I don't plan to because my vehicle does not allow me to probably transport more than three children at this time. Um, my license does give me capacity to because I went in Lorraine, I did back and forth school transportation. But now that we have relocated and things are different due to COVID requirements, I will not be transporting anybody anywhere. Thank you for that, Mr. Battle. Um, so, so Mr. Farkas, I just wanna kind of summarize and, and see if I'm correct in some of the concerns. So when I look at your recommendations, some of the concerns you have are around lot size, frontage, if I was to summarize those things, are, is, are those concerns related to, um, I don't even know. So can you tell me what, if you were to summarize what those concerns are when it comes to the lot frontage and setbacks, what is the, what is the concern with those things? The, the recommendation on page two, uh, number one, for instance, the minimum lot area shall be 30,000 square feet and the current lot size is 13,703. The concern there is just general square footage. Kids like to run. There's an insulation factor to protect and keep them away from any type of danger. And that gives them for playing ball and just being a general kid uh, is my interpretation of that. Number two. So Mr. Farkas, I'll speak to, to that one first. My understanding though is that to Mr. Battle's question, those sort of dynamics are governed by the state of Ohio to make sure that kids are in a healthy environment to learn. And that there's a whole body that controls it. If, if they would, they wouldn't even approve for her to have 
children in the space if it wasn't conducive to that. I would agree with that. That is their aspect from a zoning standpoint. This is what we're, we have. In well, yeah, I'm just saying as the professionals that, that are hired by the state to focus on kid health and well-being. Agreed. Total yeah. different animal. I so totally what, other, what other concerns do we have in here? Um, the R code requires that the lot frontage be 175 feet. The current lot frontage now is about 132 on one street and 100 feet on the other. That again is just to provide more buffer. Buffer uh, for? Anything, parking, uh, if they decide to set up play materials or a, an area for the kids to be in a controlled environment that is geared to allow that space to do so. Okay. Um, the, the, again, the building setbacks, I'm not gonna read the next couple because they're, they're just the same idea. Um, the parking setback is again to insulate the adjoining neighbors. So when vehicles come in and out um, to pick up children, drop off children, it doesn't become some kind of a nuisance. I, I don't know the hours of operation. Um, if people are concerned, they would say, hey, you know, the, the, how come there's so many cars parked in the driveway all at once? I'm not there during the operation hours, but that is what the zoning code intent is to kind of fish, uh, fish out to yep. say what's the code looking for. In just a second, Ms. Price, can you speak to that again in terms of like how you mentioned that there's a limitation on the number of children and, and so can you speak to that concern around traffic congestion? And yes, um, I did in, in concern of my adjoining and adjacent neighbors, I did go around and talk with them about what I was planning to do and I did get signatures um, basically stating that they didn't have any they didn't feel it would be any effect on them. I did email that to Mary, but my plan for that is again, uh, drop off, pick up and drop off times are staggered. Everyone does not arrive at the same time every day. Um, my current operating hours are 24 hours, although I don't have children that all of those times, it, each case is based off of the parent's working schedule. So with that being said, going for a new license, those things will potentially change um, however, with parking, like I said, I have uh, ample amount of parking for people to come in and out as well as pick up and drop off times being staggered. So there shouldn't be for the maximum of 12 children, although three and four children sometimes are to one family, um, there shouldn't be an influx of parking. Now there will be an influx of traffic as far as in and out, but our house is the first house on the street. So um, with the concern of people being in and out of our property or our driveway, other than that, it shouldn't pose an effect or threat to our neighbors. Yes, and uh, any other questions from the committee members? Uh, I just yes. have, I have one. We've got Derek, Tom, and then Don. All right, Tom, Derek, then Don, go ahead, Tom. Uh, so is there a variance required for a class B? I think Mr. Farkas uh, told me that there was. Could you answer that, Mr. Farkas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as again, the way the ordinance is written, it pretty much limits what's permitted from a daycare. It, it wants to provide ample space and most residential homes just don't meet the bill because a lot of these requirements as listed in my report uh, would be pretty hard to meet. So in this particular use that's already there, yes, it should have gone through the conditional process as we are now for that use. But now we're here for the, a different use for a proposed increase up to, I think it was, um, is it 16 children? No. 12 children. 12. Yes. 12. 12. 12. Um, may I note that the state requires for us to receive a fire, fire marshal and building inspection, which they are able to tell me what capacity I can keep mm -hmm. children based off of the 36 square feet per child rule. Carl, do you want to speak to that? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the the, the question is, is uh, yes, the fire department conducts uh, the first initial inspection in a municipal, a uh, state fire marshal would do it outside municipal, but in Elyria, the Elyria fire department conducts the initial and we can uh, determine type B or type A um, recommendations for the Department of Job and Family Services. We would have, we have appendices with all the requirements that would direct us um, 
and let us uh, determine that kind of thing. And then thereafter, we do annual inspections, and they're, they're required to have those annual inspections um, to get their license from the Department of Job and Family Services. So we do conduct those inspections throughout the city of Elyria. Let me just say that most homes are type B in the city of Elyria. Uh, there have been type A's that uh, then have gone to um, regular commercial structures because of the number of children. They, they found it to be difficult to have uh, that many children in a type A in a home. Most of our homes are two to three children or around there. So um, we do have, we have had type A's and then gone into regular buildings, commercial buildings. And then the one on Oberlin Avenue um, is an older one that's been around for many, many, many years. And um, right now, I believe it's a type B. It may have been a type A at one time, but now it's, it's only two to three. It's, it's down there by the, uh, the trolley turnaround on Oberlin Avenue. So uh, I'm just saying that most uh, home daycares in Elyria have been type Bs historically. And uh, we do the initial inspection, and then we do annual inspections. Our inspectors do them every year in these facilities. And there's quite a number of requirements that we go through to make sure they're, they're done right. And we pr provide our written letter, and then the state provides licensure. Do you, do you have any recommendations, Fire uh, Marshal? Um, I'm just, from historically saying, I have not been at, at uh, this, uh, requester's home. Uh, historically, homes are, are in, in the neighborhoods are better for a smaller number of children, but um, per square footage and per, per the zoning regulations that Daryl's talking about, um, that that's, comes before we arrive there. And then we take that information from Daryl and use it in our final uh, evaluation. Derek and then Don, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mrs. Price. Uh, yes. Can, can you tell me how many years experience you have of running a daycare on your own? Two years. Two years in yes. Lorraine before coming here? Yes. And, uh, and then Daryl, can, uh, can you answer, is there on-street parking? Is it parking on-street both sides, just one side, or no on-street parking on Regency Court? Uh, that may be a better question for John to answer, but to my knowledge, that cul-de-sac was created for parking on both sides. Parking on both sides. All right. So it, 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 it just seems to me that staggered drop-offs and pickups with, with, two, with both sides of the street parkings uh, wouldn't seem to be a major traffic issue from my perspective. But, so uh, thank you, Mrs. Price. I appreciate it. Thank you, Derek. John, did you still have something? All right. I, I do. Um, I, I do have some concerns about the lot size um, and it's, you know, the two frontages and the amount of traffic and the speed at which traffic can go down um, Ford Road. And I'm just curious to know, it looks like in the pictures you don't have any fencing or anything like that. Um, and I was just curious if you had any plans to install fencing or um, what thoughts you have about that. Yes, my husband and I have been contracted to insert a fence. I have a, a um, estimate here, but we've been contracted as of December 30th. Um, and then a follow-up question I have is just to confirm um, with Mr. Farkas, allowing the conditional use would expire when the property changes hands? The conditional use goes with the home occupancy use. If uh, Courtney decides to move to another place, the commercial atmosphere is saying just move out a different city, the use would revert back to the residential medium density district of which it was. That's the beauty of a conditional use. It's tagged to this specific area of uh, involvement. Thank you. And then lastly, I just wanted to confirm with uh, Mr. Schneider, do you foresee any traffic issues in this area um, if we change the use like this and there's that much in and out? Well, first of all, I'll just say that, you know, the roadway out there is 28 foot wide. It shouldn't have 
dual parking on both sides, but it does for some reason. I don't know what the reason why it wasn't signed years ago, but uh, it is only 28 foot wide. As far as in and out, no, not as far as the uh, being the first house, I think it, it'd be easiest to access. I mean, but if everyone came at one time, yes, it could be difficult uh, because they are right there at the first house. So uh, it, it's a tough call. <laughs> I, most of the time, I'd say no, no problem. Uh, could there be a problem once in a while, flu moon? Yeah, could be, but I, I don't see a big issue with, with that. But if, if there were 12 individual children with 12 different pickups, mm. that could be a concern. So, uh, so how's the committee feel about uh, uh, the approval? And then, or, and if so, what about is there are certain conditions? I know Don, you mentioned a fence. Is, is, I don't know if we're allowed to put a condition like that on. Hello, uh, where, where Mr. Is, Norton. How are you doing? I'll get him muted. Yeah. Sorry, got him muted. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, committee members, is there a motion? To approve it and uh, with the condition. Uh, well, I'd be curious. Are there any uh, are there any opponents or any other property? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're. Right. I'm sorry. Are there any other proponents? Are there any other proponents? Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Any opponents? Any opponents? And Courtney, you mentioned you got signatures from folks. Well, I'll make sure that gets circulated to, to us as well. I don't know Absolutely. I sent it to Mary via email. Should I send it to someone else? I will get it from her. We'll get it from her. Okay. Yeah, I got that late yesterday afternoon. Um, okay. It was, um, there was like three or four signatures on it from neighbors that were okay with the project or with the conditional use. Um, I did receive a phone call from another neighbor that had no problem with it. Okay. Thank you, Have we had any, we've had no neighbor complaints. Have we had, just curious, have there been any neighbor complaints about this? I have not gotten any. Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So Chad, Derek, or, or Derek, you seem like you're out of place, but you want to make a motion to approve with any conditions or Rhea? Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to make a motion for approval. Okay, is there a second? I personally think that it shouldn't be uh, any uh, uh, larger than a B. Okay, that's fair. Uh, is there a second though? Is there a second? Then we'll put it back up for discussion. Is there a second? I, I would second the vote, yes. Uh, second by Mr. Arbor. All right, discussion. Now, Mr. Aiden, you said uh, you, you're in favor of it uh, staying as a B. Um, as a B. Yep. Any other discussion? Any other points? And again, I like the conditional use side because to the point of if she, once she leaves, it reverts back and, you know, we can be working closely with them to make sure that, you know, that, you know, they're compliant with these other pieces in terms of the fence and things like that. Uh, uh, should should this be, should, ahead, can I have a question here? Yes, Mr. Battle, please. Uh, should this be pending Ohio Department Job Family Services inspection for 12? Well, I think to Mrs. Price's point, they won't do the inspection unless this is approved. Is it, was that correct? That is correct. Yeah, so I think there's other checkpoints that if she doesn't, that we pass this, she still got to pass through a couple other hurdles before she gets up. And just, but, <laughs> but, just curious. But, oh, but the Ohio Department, they come in every so often too, also, right? Yeah, yes. so if we approve this, then they'll come in and check. And if they don't approve it, then she doesn't move forward. Absolutely. So this we don't have to worry about questions. that traffic and, and, and we don't have to worry about the traffic and fencing and the exit doors and all that because that's what they look for. That's what they're going to look for. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Mr. Schneider. I have a question for Mrs. Price. When you, yeah. when you approached the neighbors and received signatures that were in favor, was it for the type A or for the type B that you informed them of it was for the type a um i went based off of mr farkas's review um okay. and his motion to deny so i addressed them then and explained what i was trying to do and i tried to address any adverse effects that could be on them which were the ones i thought of were the parking and the children at play and so i let them know just like i let you guys know today about the plan for parking as well as the contract for fence Okay, and it looks like, you know, in 
I don't know if more of the properties that were used as type B in the city, this home has two basement entrances, correct? Yes. Which, I mean, if it didn't have two basement entrances, would we be more apt to say B over A? I'm just talking at this point. With it being an A and you having two entrance points, points to your basement, um, that I think that does help because you have two egresses out, you know, to get out of the property from the basement. Thank you. Any further discussion uh, for uh, Mrs. Price? Did, did the neighbors that you talked to express any concerns? I, mean, I know you said you kind of discussed the, that with them, but they did they seem to have any concerns as far as you recall? No, none of them had any concerns. I can read the letter if need be, but um, I opened the discussion, of course, for any concerns. And the only they would only sign this letter if they didn't have any concerns. So I have the signatures of the people who are new under new construction right next door to me, the signature of the woman who lives behind me, and the signature of those who live directly across the street from me. And I'll make sure we get that forwarded to the rest of the committee as well. Any other discussion? All right, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Hang on. Aye. Are we in favor aye. of the class A? Is that because we had yeah. a. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So this is a motion to approve a conditional use type A uh, for as for the said property. And so it's been, uh, we can redo it. Motion by, is, can I have a motion for that? So moved. Moved by Mr. Tedrow. Is there yep. a second? Second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Hubbard. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. One nay, Mr. Aiden. And were there any abstentions? All right, motion carries. All right, good luck, Ms. Price. Thank you. All right, so there's a uh, Last but not least, and thank you for your patience. And so this is this is the this is the exciting part. I hope <laughs> the exciting part. Yes, we're at the exciting part of the agenda, um, uh, discussing Midway Mall. We're, we're, we have some changes that we're going to propose to the agenda, uh, but we're going to start with um, you know getting our partners here at, uh, up ICP, the team from ICP. Um, so again, this is really. Um, I'm really excited about this conversation and then, you know, this vote because we're going to be discussing the redevelopment of Midway Mall, which for many of us, this is something that's near and dear to us um, that we want to see for the city ushering in this new wave of development to Midway Mall. So I'm going to pass it over to the folks at ICP to kind of share a little bit about their company, what they have at stake right now, and then we'll go uh, specifically into their zoning request. So Mr. Salada. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning or good afternoon now, almost afternoon now to everybody. Um, thanks for having us today. My name is Chris Salat. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Industrial Commercial Properties. Uh, I'm joined today by our Senior Vice President of Development, Jeff Martin, and by our Land Use Council, Jordan Burns. Um, we, as, as you may know, um, we have, uh, for the last almost, almost two years now, owned the former Sears Building and the former Dillard's Building at Midway Mall. Uh, we have been in, um, I'll, I'll say, um, tough negotiations with the current owner of the Interior Mall uh, going on almost a year now, um, but those have continued to make great progress. And we've continued to work closely with the mayor uh, and Don and her team and his team um, as we've started to market the site for a potential redevelopment. ICP is a 25-year-old uh, real estate development firm. Um, we own 42 million square feet of space in four states. We have over 300 tenants in our portfolios and about 150 buildings. Uh, locally, we're probably most known for our redevelopment of uh, Randall Park Mall, which many of you, you may be familiar with. Uh, we acquired that mall uh, in seven to eight different acquisitions over the course of six years uh, and ultimately drove uh, the redevelopment of an Amazon fulfillment center there um, but also maintained the existing Sears building and redeveloped that into an industrial use. So we, we currently have at that Sears building four different industrial tenants uh, that operate out of that building. We have done six deals with Sears. And what we found is in our, is our line of work, these Sears buildings um, really set themselves up well for industrial redevelopment for a variety of reasons. 
one, it's got typically it's located, you know, at a, at a mall location like this that has all of the heavy utility infrastructure you would need. It's got access and visibility, which is important to a lot of these logistics providers. And it also has the, the, the bones of a, of a building that suits itself well for industrial use. Um, we've been talking to the mayor about an overall redevelopment of this particular site, Midway Mall site, that could incorporate some light industrial uses. We think given its location as kind of the gateway, uh, the Western gateway to Cleveland, to the greater Cleveland area, its location between I-80 and I-90, um, and in the recent surge and boom of e-commerce and all of the, uh, the distribution that we've all seen, especially in the wake of the COVID pandemic, um, there, are gonna, there is gonna be a lot of demand and interest in this particular location um, for that type of use. Um, we have continued to market the Sears sites uh, over the last couple of years. We've talked to retailers, we've talked to self-storage, we've talked to industrial users. And we believe that the first thing you do at one of these redevelopments is really the most important thing you do. And that isn't, that's never more relevant than just looking down the road at Randall. Um, there at Randall, we actually redeveloped the Sears building prior to landing Amazon. And what that did for us, everyone, is that actually signified to the market and specifically to Amazon, the nature of this particular piece of property was changing and that the community in which it resided, being the village North Randall, was open to these new uses, this new economic development, and of course, the new job creation coming to that location. And so what we did there is we started with that Sears redevelopment, and lo and behold, that led to future discussions with Amazon, which then led to the fulfillment center that now includes over 3,000 employees working at that site, and a, a handsome check that goes to Mayor Smith every month that uh, I'm I won't disclose today, but it's it's a lot more than he was getting before uh, with the dead mall. So um, I think the way that we envision this particular site is very similar to our approach at Randall. And that is we have to get the first project here right in order to kick this redevelopment off. And so I guess we're, we're here today to talk about a prospect for that first project, um, specifically a user for the Sears. This is a, a third party logistics provider. So in our in our business, we typically refer to them as 3PLs, but this is a, a logistics provider that houses and ships uh, products for a variety of businesses. Um, they're, one of their biggest uh, clients is actually Walmart. This is a, a user that is, has multiple locations in and around the Northeast Ohio market, and they have identified Elyria as a location that they would like to be. Uh, we are currently competing with one other location for their business. And what they have told us is that given the current zoning here, uh, they're not able to move forward um, with, with their project. That said, if we're able to find a way to uh, accommodate their use here, they have told us that this is their preferred location and they can move immediately to lease negotiations, which would commit them to a long-term commitment to the city of Elyria and, L and Lorraine County. And most importantly, I think, as we look at the larger redevelopment of the mall, they would they would be the the catalyst we believe to to start this larger redevelopment and uh, and kick off what we believe is going to be can be a fantastic redevelopment of the site. So I, I think this is something that we've done. This is what we do. Um, we are we are redevelopment experts. Um, adaptive reuse of existing buildings is really our bread and butter. Whether it be a former retail location, whether it be a former um, automotive plant, we've redeveloped half a dozen former GM and Ford plants throughout the states of Ohio and Michigan. Um, and we've done quite a bit of retail conversion. Um, I think everybody on this call would acknowledge that, you know, the retail market at this particular site has obviously changed dramatically over the years. Uh, most recently, JCPenney left the mall, Best Buy left the mall. And while I, while I don't think that retail at this location is dead, I do think that it has, the, the demand has, has decreased significantly. I think there's still an opportunity for retail and restaurants and that kind of, uh, those kind of uses to operate in conjunction with an industrial redevelopment. What industrial redevelopment has, we've seen do for other former mall locations is that it drives daytime population, which in turn helps those retailers, helps those restaurants We've seen that exact same phenomenon play out at Randall. 
In addition to developing the redeveloping the Sears, we've developed a, uh, a Taco Bell there on an out parcel. We also took down the former Holiday Inn, which was on the corner across from the Racino, the Jack Racino. We're getting a ton of interest there from potential retailers and restaurants that want to be next to these industrial users because of the employment and because of that daytime population. So we do view this as kind of a win-win on, on a bunch of different fronts, um, but we believe that the nature of this particular location, unfortunately, has drifted away from retail and this particular asset class right now presents the best use uh, for, the, for this particular site. Thank you, Chris. And this uh, specific request they have today is to rezone the parcels um, 0640311070042 and 0624030000135 located at 4900 and 4950 Midway Mall, Elyria, Ohio, from a business general district to a light industrial district. So that is what we'll be um, voting on and discussing today. Um, and so um, staff, uh, Mr. Farkas, you wanna give you a staff report? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for clarity uh, regarding the parcels, the application submitted uh, indicated that only two parcels of interest were uh, to be on the agenda. I'm unaware of these additional parcels. So my report will be specific. That was two, that was two parcels, Mr. Farkas. That's okay, that my report part. will be specifically geared to those two. So I know there was other parcels involved. So uh, please excuse my uh, uh, confusion. The request, <clears throat> the proponent is requesting parcel 06-24-031-107-042-4950 Midway and 4900 parcel 06-24-030-000 dash 135 4950 Midway be rezoned from a business general district to a light industrial district. <clears throat> the zoning, the rezoning is to accommodate a proposed warehouse and trucking facility findings. Um, I'll briefly skim through the business general requirements as is in my previous reports, they're unchanged. It just goes into the requirements of what's permitted in a business general, pretty much what was there now, retail. Um, I'll zip right to the light industrial uh, to expedite. Uh, the requirements of a light industrial can be found in the Lyric codified ordinance section 1164. The purpose of a light industrial district is to accommodate and encourage development of light industrial uses which operate within enclosed structures, clean and quiet, free of hazardous or object objectable elements such as noise, odor, dust, smoke, glare, or vibration. First section 1164.02, principally permitted uses, the Elyria codified ordinances permit automotive repair, building materials, related trade, cellular communication sites, contract construction services, light manufacturing and storage, lock and store warehouses, off-premise signs, printing, publishing, public utility yards, research and development, laboratories, truck terminals, and warehousing, wholesale business, etc. <clears throat> that findings continue. Note. First section 1125.61 definition section, as on my report of the Elyria codified ordinance, light manufacturing and storage means the assembling, altering, fabricating, finishing, or processing or treatment or storage of a product. Staff recommendations. This site is primarily comprised of business general district of which consists of multiple diverse establishments in and around the area. The board must consider how proposals such as this will maintain the integrity of the budding zoning district. I have attached a map for the board's use so they can see what's around and efforts of avoiding spot zoning in a pre-established business general district. If approved, the new zoning classification would permit exterior and interior storage and any other permitted light industrial use as described in, <clears throat> herein based on the information provided. Um, with this information, I would not be in favor of the request. Now, this report was prepared uh, prior to some information being brought to my attention of the potential future overlay requirements for the entire mall. I have come to my uh, attention that the proponent is uh, willing to abide by the requirements of any overlay if implemented and the restrictions herein. With that in mind, I would change my report to a more favorable response because it would allow us some limitations of what will be permitted in this pre-established business general district. Thank you, Mr. Farkas. So just in summary, 
one of the major concerns that we had as a city and the staff was uh, outdoor storage. Uh, with light industrial, it really could open up the door for, um, you know, salt, you know, big rocks being stored in the parking lot and things like that. No, we trust this this, uh, this uh, partner. Uh, if that's not what they're looking for, it's still with that zoning being there, that would be a concern. And so uh, we talked with the developers uh, about would they be willingly um, uh, voluntarily offer up to not have that as a usage on the deed and have a deed restriction that that would not be allowed. Um, and then internally, we would create a process that if anyone uh, wanted to use outdoor storage, they, they would have to come back to us for approval uh, to, to determine if we felt it was uh, acceptable to have that sort of outdoor storage. So, um, and I, I, Chris, I'll let you respond to some yeah. of the concerns and then that as well. Yeah, as, as we talked about with, with the mayor, um, outdoor storage can be sometimes an ancillary use to some light uh, industrial users, as you can imagine. We don't, we don't plan on uh, pursuing any, and by the way, the user that's, that's at the table right now is not someone that uh, is, a, is a storage yard per se. Now, whether that means they might have a trailer or two that hooks up to the loading docks where they store things in, that's a possibility. That might be a, necess a necessity, I should say, to their business. Whether or not, you know, where the, let's talk about kind of where the existing Sears loading docks are. If at times they may have empty pallets located out there, absolutely. That's probably part of their business. But to the mayor's point about, you know, rock piles and salt and, and materials of that nature, that's not the type of user that this is. Um, I, I would like to ask the commission if they would consider, um, and especially as we move forward into the overlay, and it's something we've talked about uh, with other, other members of the commission already, considering including outdoor storage, should it comply with you know, screen, proper screening requirements that this commission would have the ability to review and approve? Um, I think in the, Jordan, you can correct me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I think in the current code, the city's current code, there are some provisions uh, that speak to that type of uh, process as it relates to outdoor storage, correct? Yeah, there, there are, uh, there's at least one other zoning district in the city where outdoor storage is allowed provided that um, uh, it's screened um, from view, and, and I'm reading now, um, by a wall or, uh, of material similar to and compatible with that of the building or buildings on the site or be suitably screened by a fence or dense landscaping so that such storage areas are not visible from neighboring sites, lots, common areas, or public roads, streets, or rights of way. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's what we've discussed um, uh, before today um, for consideration in connection with the overlay district that, that the uh, planning commission is, is being asked to consider. We understand that's a separate discussion mm -hmm. and, yes, and, and that, that, um, that you'll discuss those specifics um, later on. But for purposes of, um, of this rezoning request, we're certainly willing to abide by those same limitations. We're, we're as, as Chris described, this is the first step in, in a much larger scale redevelopment of the mall property. And we have no interest or desire in um, devaluing um, right. the asset and, and, and undermining the redevelopment that Chris has described by, um, by uh, attracting and allowing the sort of um, open outdoor storage um, that the building commissioner has has concerns over. We 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 would sh we would share those same concerns, um, but but a a, a blanket prohibition um, with respect to to this site really would, as Chris described, um, uh, limit limit the ability for for the industrial tenants that that we try and attract to sites like this from conducting their business. Um, and and that's 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 the last thing we want to do, and hopefully that's the last thing that 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 this planning commission wants to do as part of this. So we we think the the better course of action, certainly with regard to the the former Sears property, is the kind of limitation on any outdoor storage that I just read from the code. 
um, that that gives gives the city protection against um, the the adverse impact on the um, the adjacent and surrounding properties that 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 it really um, needs and still gives our our industrial tenants the ability to to function as as you'd expect they would using using at least some outdoor storage, but making sure that they do it in a manner that uh, that that keeps the site attractive, um, both within and without. And I think that's consistent. Once again, not to go back to Randall, but it's the more we the more we look at the two sites, it's it, the more apples to apples it, it really becomes, especially with the Sears here at play. Um, that former Sears, there is one tenant in that building that has outdoor storage. That outdoor storage is properly screened. It does front on a road, but it's been properly screened um, to the to the village's satisfaction. And that was something we had to go back in and um, they had the final approval rights on it. Um, and that's, I guess, that's the exact path that we would we would hope to go down here with Elyria. And, and, and Chris, you're saying that can you talk a little bit more about how you, you said you had to go back to the village to get that approval for that key so there was a site site plan i mean within the zoning context those restrictions that jordan referenced we would have to come back in for a site plan approval which would then be subject to this commission's review and, and sign off gotcha. um, now what i'm what i can tell you right now is this particular user at multiple other locations they don't have any outdoor storage mm -hmm. so it may it may be a moot point with this group uh, if they if they they do have at a couple locations a very small amount as i talked about and it's really limited to you know occasional empty pallets but it's not it's not materials as i think uh, mr farkas was referencing and the concerns mayor that you've referenced as it relates to rocks or metal or steel or things like that any any questions from the committee uh, yes i have a question um, you indicated, I believe, that uh, some neighboring property, or you've been in negotiations with the owner of the mall proper. How does, how would this impact the existing kind of retail structure, especially considering the fact that Sears is attached? You know, it's not quite a neighboring. I understand it's a neighboring parcel, but it shares some common corridors and those sort of things, or at least has in the past. And I'm just curious how that would work moving forward if we only rezone a portion of this? Right, so that's a great question. Um, currently, as it, as it stands, those access points to the mall are no longer um, in place. Uh, somebody's pulling up a site plan here. Those access points are already closed off at this point and the, and the parcel itself is kind of operated separately from the mall since Sears left. Um, the loading is actually located in a location on the south side of the building that is away from the front retail entrance. All the utilities are already um, separately metered um, and come to this building. Um, the hope would be as we proceed with the negotiations with the owner of the interior mall that um, parts of that mall would, would be dem demolished and parts would be actually uh, redeveloped. So we could use the existing structure of the mall in many instances to redevelop uh, into different uses, whether that be industrial or office or other commercial uses. Um, our plan would be to take down as little of the existing mall as we can, um, because we, we've just found one, it's, it's, much, it's a much quicker process to redevelop an existing site than it is to, to demo the whole thing and start over. Now that said, if a big whale like you know, that big e-commerce group came along here and wanted to be here, well, then it would make sense for everybody to take it down and let them do their thing. But um, our plan initially would be to redevelop some of the, as much of the existing structures as possible. So as we would redevelop the Sears, to answer your question, we would keep that in mind um, and make sure that the loading, the access, all of that was set up such that should that whole retail strip remain on Midway Mall Boulevard, that there wouldn't be any disruption to that and also that it could lend itself to redevelopment of that at a future date. Other questions from committee members? And I actually, I should say, Mayor, what's important about this particular user is they would commit to take a large portion of the first floor of the space right out of the gate with uh, hopes that they could grow their business into the, the second floor. Um, as many of you I'm sure can appreciate leasing second floor space in any location 
is difficult. And so if you have a, uh, a user that has plans for growth and can stay within that same building, um, that's another huge benefit to working with this particular user is that they do have uh, plans and hopes to grow into potentially all of that space. I have a question. Is there any intention on using the detached structure, which would be what was formerly the auto center? Auto center would not be associated with this particular user. We would, we would continue to pursue other uses for that building. Thank you. And Mr. Salata, uh, I had a question. In, in comparison yeah. to the Randall Park, that was uh, the Randall Park location, yep. how does, what, what is the is the square footage of 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 our Sears versus their Sears? Uh, is it about the same? Pretty pretty darn close. You know, the big difference I would tell you between this and Randall is, if you've ever been out to Randall, the Sears at Randall you can actually enter at two levels. Um, so it's it's built in. You can enter the second level on grade. It's built into the hill, so you All can right. enter that. You can enter the second level on grade, which candidly made that a little bit easier to redevelop. Uh, into multi-tenant because you had two separate, essentially you had two separate entrances and you had two separate loading uh, areas. Here, right. we got a traditional two-story, you know, uh, right. bomb shelter like Sears used to build right. them. And this is an all concrete building. It's, it's ex the, the building itself is the infrastructure, the bones of it are in great condition. It already has loading as Sears, you know, obviously utilize that as part of their operations. Large freight elevators, plenty of power. So once again, those are a bunch of the characteristics that lend itself to, to these types of industrial users right out of the gate. Yeah, my, uh, I, I, I was hoping you would say that hopefully if, if this gets approved, uh, we can, the Sears can support the same capacity that you're doing at Randall Park would be ideal, you know, especially for this community. I, ideal, I, I, ideal redevelopment of this would be to fill the entire building potentially with another user. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Other, other committee members? Yeah, this is a, uh, Tom Aiden. I would think that we should be looking at the overall overlay district instead of just spot zoning, just one. Yeah. Uh, so that just seems to make more sense to me than just yep. doing a spot zoning. But uh, yeah, I can speak to that. So, um, you know, the original goal was to have the overlay. Um, uh, district piece on the agenda. However, right now, currently, we don't have anything in code to be able to do an overlay. So oh. part of what we'll be discussing after this is like, how do we now build an infrastructure within the city uh, so that we can have an overlay district so that we can kind of handle broader projects and not just one individual parcel, but us as a commission can recommend multiple parcels. But right now in the code, that doesn't exist. So that'll be a part of the discussion right after this. Okay. Yeah, Mayor, maybe I can speak to that too. I mean, I, the urgency as it relates to the Sears is directly related to this particular user. Um, if we didn't have this user at the table right now, I think we could all be a little bit more patient on the overlay, but in an effort to get this user in, and as I said, kind of serve as a catalyst for the larger redevelopment, that's why we're, we've approached you on the, uh, the individual rezone. Now that said, we think the individual rezone of, this, of these couple of parcels when you hold it up against the the proposed overlay, um, is consistent is consistent with the, uh, the the overlay and and should be able to be blend blended in, you know it's not like we're going to have a you know a, a totally different use here that's not consistent with what the overlay would contemplate. So trying to take advantage of trying to take advantage of timing here. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Right. Yeah. Any other? I have one other question, yeah, please, Mr. Please, Mayor. Please, Mr. Hayden. Go ahead, Mr. Hayden, please. Okay. Uh, so if we're trying to be urgent, is a conditional use good? Uh, is that something that we could utilize until the overlay district's in place? That'd be quick, Mr. Farkas. Uh, yeah, I can speak to that, Tom. Uh, unfortunately, there is nothing in place that triggers a conditional use for a particular uh, atmosphere of what's proposed. Um, as far as a other options, we're trying to create this overlay district that would give some flexibility, but yet maintain the integrity of the overall district. It's encouraging to see the, the response of the proponent, the willingness to say, yes, we're willing to do this, we're willing to do that. 
my initial report was governed strictly on, as you said, Tom, a spot zoning of which it's essential it would technically be if we were just to singularly focus on this one project which we're not so okay. we're kind of not getting into that yet that's coming as the mayor said but as it's presented to us i think what's proposed is viable okay thank you i think the the, the other thing that we should note here as it relates to um the sears is the exterior of this building will get completely upgraded as a result of this user coming along so we call it our S1 package, but essentially a brand new paint job, power wash. You probably won't recognize the Sears when it's done, but um, <laughs> this, this, this obviously has a lot of great frontage on State Route 57. And as Jordan spoke to earlier, you, you got to get the first one right. And so we want to set a new standard here. We want to set a new, a new level of, um, of excellence as it relates to the quality of the redevelopment. And so that's going to be an important part of this for us is uh, when you see that site plan approval from us, you'll see that the, the exterior building improvements that we will contemplate here will really freshen this thing up. Um, uh, my question is in regards to the outdoor storage piece, because I'm, I'm sensing uh, amongst the group that there is comfort everywhere, but the, the outdoor storage piece hasn't been addressed, I don't think, in a way where I've found that there's consensus yet. Um, and so the options were for us to uh, help me understand the options, uh, Mr. Parkers and Mr. Taylor. So one, one option is um, they voluntarily uh, um, withhold, especially for this parcel, the ability for outdoor storage, knowing that this tenant doesn't need outdoor storage. And then, um, so that's one option. I guess I want to put that one, one on the table first and, and hear from ICP your thoughts on that. That, that one, uh, because from my understanding, this tenant doesn't need the outdoor storage per se. And so we could address that issue and move on. And then in the overlay, when we address, we can go into more, um, you know, descriptive and prescriptive on here's what we allow, won't allow, here will be our process for uh, variances or, or um, adjustments made. Um, is, would ICP be comfortable moving forward with with it without the outdoor stores today with the expectation that we're going to talk about an overlay which will provide that kind of flexibility and new process for us to uh, make sure the city is protected, et cetera. I, I think on the overlay, Mayor, we're totally fine with that approach. I, I think here, just because, well, I, like I said, majority of their locations, they don't have it, but they may need it here, a uh, small amount of it here. If we could, if we could move forward, I think the existing L1 zoning, Jordan, once again, Correct me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I think if we were to rezone to L1, outdoor storage would be permitted. But what we would contemplate is adding a proviso here that basically says if there were outdoor storage contemplated, it would have to be properly screened and it would have to be reviewed and approved by this commission. And I'm, yeah, even, that, that, I'm, again, even, willing, I'm even willing to go so far as to kind of, as we come in too, to, to highlight exactly where that would be Mayor, I don't know if I can share my screen real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah go ahead. Okay, let me let me show you because that might help everybody. So this is this is just kind of the Google Earth image of of the Sears. Here's here's State Route 57 running north south. But this is the loading current loading area here for the Sears. So if if it's a big if, but if outdoor storage were required for this particular user, I would contemplate that it would really only be in this small area and that if it were to happen, that we would be able to screen this appropriately, particularly as it relates to, uh, to, state, to yeah, visibility from the roadway. Um, so just so everyone has an idea of what that could look like, this particular user, it would probably be limited to this area of the Sears. Chris, I don't know if you want to drop down to street view, but I was looking at this earlier too. You know, there's really not much of a sight line back to that side of the building from 57 from the public right away today, given the Sears Auto Center. Um, so, you know, I think that plays to our advantage as well. Yeah, so you're talking about, you know, this little area there as you approach. But to Jeff's, Jeff's point, as you're approaching from, from the south, you're soon to be screened here by the auto center. 
which we don't pl- which we don't plan on taking down. So that that would be that that would be that area right back in there that they could potentially have a small amount of outdoor storage. Yeah. Well, I hope y'all paint the auto building too because th- these buildings are horrendous. It's looking like yeah. yeah, they like I said they look like bomb shelters. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll clean not, those up. Not a pleasant sight to look at. Um, so, uh, a committee, what's your thoughts about the the uh, there? And you mentioned Jordan that there was another place in the city where you felt like there was there was a process that people had to go through in order to um, to uh, to put the screening up. They had to go through design review and or some sort of process to get approval for that um, for that coverage. Um, well, again, the, the the language that I read, which comes out of Chapter 1170 of the city's code, which is the Technology Park District, although it may appear elsewhere in the code as well, um, that that's the language that really establishes the standard. To, to Chris's point, we would anticipate that we would still need to submit a, a development plan um, that would be reviewed under the city's existing um, development plan review process mm-hmm. to verify that that the screening meets the requirements um, that that I read. Um, uh, Mr. Parker, that, do you read that the same that there would be a another checkpoint in this process where we would have a chance to see beforehand? Give me one moment. You said that was in the uh, TPO district? Yes. Well, no, I'm just speaking in general. Aside from the TPO district, do you see the same sort of process happening that there would be another checkpoint back to us with limitations as as mentioned earlier in the conversation anything accessory to the primary use uh as mentioned storage truck trailers that may be docked uh, at the actual docking bay or parked somewhere else in preps of being docked um is still part of the accessory use I don't know if the necessarily the code is that site specific that says you have to screen that because it's not a permanent thing. They come and they pull the trailer, they leave. Um, I'll use examples of Walmart on Chestnut Collins. That's a prime example. You have a large retail business that has an outdoor garden area. That is a site screen area that is attached to the building. It is an accessory use on its own, but it is properly screened. And that from a visual perspective is less impactful than seeing, as mentioned, I mentioned to the mayor in the past, of multiple shipping containers. That is a potentiality of you name it colors being placed sporadically throughout the site, of which the zoning code would, I would have to say, I can't really push. But with the overlay requirements would give us a little more teeth, I would say, to say, hey, we'd like yeah, to so in the future. That. So I would, I guess my, my thing would be to, to, um, um, to, to uh, ICP, um, well, well, I'll open up for other questions, but I was just gonna speak to, because I don't wanna keep mixing these overlay conversations. I think it's important that we're gonna have that discussion, but I wanna treat this as, as what it is because this is more time sensitive and we need to you know, make a decision based upon how comfortable we feel. Um, but I was thinking about, um, uh, you know, if, if, we, if we do do the overlay, then the overlay can address a lot of these concerns we have um, and would ICP be amenable to accepting those uh, restrictions that we put into the overlay as, as once we go through that whole administrative le- legislative process? Yes, I believe that would be that would be agreeable to us. Um, and this this outdoor storage issue, we we could address in a similar fashion, such that we would need to come to the city and show them where that could be and what it would consist of, how it would be screened, and have this commission uh, have the ability to say yay or nay. Mayor, may I interject? Yeah, please. I think right now while we're just doing this zoning and again, when we get to the overlay, I think Mr. Salat has explained it can be part of the overall process. If we limited at this point while we're just doing the rezoning to the area that I don't know who it was, Jeff or whoever, Chris showed, okay. if we either did a deed restriction or other type of limitation for now, and then when the overlay comes in, I'm hoping they would put this into the overlay because it still fits in as general business with a with an light industrial overlay then you can control it even better and you can even make adjustments to this as as mr salada and their company develops new tenants 
they maybe needs to come back to Daryl and this commission or the council. And I think from this is my perspective, I'm just the planning commission attorney, but when you get to city council and their legal counsel, which is different in the city of Elyria, they get to these same questions are going to come up. So if we kind of address them now, I think it's going to be easier exactly on the road if this passes to then go to council and say right. we're willing initially for this rezoning to limit that that storage area or whatever you want to call it they will buffer it we'll limit it to this point either by deed restriction or by ordinance and then if we go from there and then as we get to the overlay if we get to that project which i hopefully we do um then that can cover the whole thing and, and mr salada's company can agree to throw this parcel because when we do the re the overlay you're going to do the whole mall i would assume would be the mm -hmm. hope not just specific sections yeah so so to that question um jim are we able to put a restriction on a certain area and say we allow outdoor storage in a certain area are we able to do that i think you almost have to do it by a deed restriction at this point because if we just do the zoning the zoning just says as daryl said there's no limits it's just what can be done and you have to follow it so initially i think you'd have to do it with a deed restriction in my opinion so uh, jordan, uh, jordan you may you may have a different thought process on that or daryl so you're saying approve the rezone with the deed restriction for now and then again that can be yeah yeah that's, i just want to work right that's what you're proposing jordan and chris would you be comfortable with that if we identified a location on the site that we all agree to and i i, I haven't necessarily heard that concern from the rest of the committee members by the way but to jim's point this is going to be a conversation we're going to have with council members etc so it's best to have the answer now than then uh, referred back to us or something yeah exactly uh, Look, while I'm while I'm still a licensed attorney in the state of Ohio, uh, I only wear I only wear that hat when I need to. So I'll defer to Jordan and uh, Jim <laughs> on, on if that gets it done on the blocking and tackling side of the legal. Yeah, no, we uh, uh, Jim, I understand the concern, and 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 yeah, I, I, on the one hand, I I do think that the city in its ordinance could could approve the rezoning subject to that limitation, but I also understand. Um, the, 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 the city's preference for that to, to appear in a deed restriction um, that, that, yeah, could be, could be modified subject to uh, agreement of the city. Sure, it would be you a, your a deed restriction in the, city's, in, in the city's favor. And Does that need to be to identified it. now, the location, or? I think it would be beneficial. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll share my screen. So um, can you see the map? Yes. Okay, yes. so so, uh, I actually Zoom allows you to draw on this thing too. By the way, um, so what we're proposing is uh, to approve, uh, or I uh, ask, but what I'm asking is there a motion, or are we exploring is there a motion to approve a rezone with a deed restriction with outdoor storage only allowed in the area that you see the square now. And for Mr. Aiden, I don't know, you're on the phone. Uh, this is the area um, south of Sears. And um, and they showed on the map how the uh, the auto center kind of blocks the visuals coming from the south. Um, and this is the side that's kind of facing Johnny K's and facing, not really not facing Johnny, but facing the back of the auto store. South, south section. Mayor, before you take that, you had to get the proponents and opponent part in. I, oh, yeah, yeah. I just was saying, is that what we're going to go for when we get to that place of motion? I'm not ready to make the motion. I'm just saying, is this what we're in agreement on? Well, and, and just, to, just to ask a question, mm -hmm. but whenever it comes, you know, whenever it's finalized, if they don't, you know, and we hope that they do, but if they don't proceed with light industrial in the next building, you might want to have some screening to the east also, mm -hmm. so that whoever's over there is not looking at storage containers, if they're going to be storage containers 10 years from now. Yep, and that's, that's where I'm really anxious to get into this overlay piece, because that's where we can really tackle yeah. some of those pieces. All right, so let, let's, uh, let's hear if there's any opponents. Any opponents on the call? Any opponents? Any opponents? Any opponents? Any opponents? Okay, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the rezoning of the said parcels um, for the two parcels that are, and I'm going to read those parcels off 064031 107 042 and 0624030 000. 
135, located at 4900 and 4950 Midway Mall, Elyria, Ohio, uh, from business general district to light industrial district with the condition of a deed restriction allowing only for outdoor storage and the identified map presented to you here. So right. move. Moved, who is okay. that? Mr. Tedrow. Moved by Mr. Tedrow, is there a second? I'll second. John, second by Ms. Calvert. Is there any further discussion? And wouldn't we want to add to that though with with our approved screening even for that? Yeah, with, with appropriate buffing to be approved, which we've all agreed to, whether it ends okay. up being a brick wall or landscaping, we have to see what it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just Mr. Chairman. Yes, I was looking for you. I, yes, sorry. Um, just, I, I just had a question too, and this just relates to any legislation we would have to draft yep. coming out of this. Yep. So for clarification, what we're saying is you're going to rezone it um, subject to a deed restriction that is it prohibiting outdoor storage except in that highlighted area that you have on your map subject to buffering restrictions? Is that a fair approximation of the motion? That's why, that's why I love when you when you just summarize it. That was it very concisely. Do you agree, Mr. Sonata? I do. Yeah, that was it, perfect. I wish I could have said that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, nay. And were there any abstentions? All right, motion carries unanimously. All right, so now, thank you, Chris. You're welcome to stick around for this part of the discussion if you want, and your team. Uh, we're gonna shift to talk about the zoning overlay. And so Stephanie Mercado is engaged with the city uh, and has been helping us with economic development. Um, and she uh, is an expert at this stuff. So she's gonna give us some background about what a, what zoning, over, what a zoning overlay is. Uh, what we are recommending that there be no vote on this today uh, I would like for us to schedule a special planning commission meeting either for the 19th, for the 19th, if that's available for you all, where we would actually vote on uh, the language as well as vote on the parcels. So the part of this discussion will just be for educational purposes. And then we would actually have a, a formal meeting on the 19th or the, the week of the 19th, I'll say, to actually vote on um, the language and the parcels, if that's okay with everyone. Seeing has not so there. So no, Stephanie, I'll, I'll pass it to you if you want to introduce yourself and share um, what we'll be talking about here with the zoning overlay. Hey, Mayor, real quick, uh, I do have to jump to another call, but I think Jeff and Jordan are going to stay on on our behalf. But I wanted to, you know, thank everybody today for uh, for their uh, consideration, and uh, it's it's a pleasure to meet everybody at least electronically. Hopefully, we're in a world real soon where we can all meet in person. Yes. And we're looking, and uh, our company is. is uh, it's privileged to be working here with the city of Elyria and uh, and in Lorraine County, and we're uh, excited to move forward. So thank you very much. Happy New Year. Thank you, thank you for investing into this. Yes, you got it. Take care. All right, Stephanie, passing it back to you again. Stephanie's gonna. I know you might need to get some water. Or something we've been at it for an hour and a half, but step with Stephanie's gonna talk to you just to overall. What is a zoning overlay? And then we're going to talk about how the city can use that tool, and then we can actually get into some of the details of what we want to talk about, what we want to vote on for our next meeting. So today will be really high level. And we'll queue up how we want to vote and what we want to vote on uh, for our, our special planning commission meeting. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for having me present at the the commission meeting today. Um, just a housekeeping note: Can everybody see the PowerPoint? presentation that I've shared? Yes. yes. Okay, great, wonderful. Um, so we're going to take some time to talk about what a redevelopment overlay district in general would look like. Megan, this oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Um, so just to kind of give us a little bit of an agenda of the topics that we're gonna talk through. Um, the first is what is an overlay district in general? What's the process to adopt it within the city? We're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive on the actual proposed redevelopment overlay district definition and requirements that we've put together for the planning uh, commission. And then um, discuss its potential application to 
um, areas in the city in in the city and exactly why we're taking this approach. Um, and then I'm going to open it up for questions and discussion. However, at any point um, in the presentation, feel free to interrupt me if there's any points of clarification that you guys would like to talk through. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I am president of a company called Nuevado. Um, we're a special economic development and community planning um, advisory company. Uh, I have been working in the economic development and planning field for probably over 15 years now. I actually, um, I'm thrilled to be working in Elyria. It is, I'm not, um, uh, my family's not originally from Ohio, but we moved to Elyria in the early 90s. My parents still live uh, off of Chestnut, Chestnut Ridge Road and I'm there several days a week. So I'm excited to um, be engaged in a professional capacity and help the community, uh, community grow. Um, I started out as, a, as an attorney in Elyria and great to work with Jim again um, before transitioning into community and economic development um, in the near west side of Cleveland. And then I moved on to work uh, representing Jobs Ohio at a regional level. And then um, for the past couple of years, I've transitioned back into the private sector, both as a consultant and um, am affiliated with a law firm in Cleveland. Uh, but for the specific purposes, really looking at, at work as a, as a consultant in terms of how Elyria can be more competitive to win investment and execute on some stri uh, strategic projects. So the first question um, that, that just to ask is what is an overlay district? So included a definition from the American Planning Association it says an overlay zone is a zoning district, which is applied over one or more previously established zoning districts established um, that establish additional or stricter standards or criteria for covered properties um, in uh, addition to those of the underlying zone district. Um, also, according to the APA, and you'll, you, we can go through a couple of case studies if you'd like to at a later point in time, but the general use of uh, of an overlay uh, uh, comes into place for use of historic districts, national resource, uh, natural resource protection, economic development considerations. Um, generally, local governments have broad authority on how to implement their own overlays, um, but it, so it can be used to promote specific development projects such as mixed use developments, waterfront developments, um, housing or affordable housing. Um, but ultimately, I think the, the common theme that, that we should be thinking about when you're thinking of an overlay district is that um, the, your current, there is a lack of a current zoning solution to support the desired land use outcomes. Um, and just in, ter in terms of looking at our previous discussion that we had on the agenda, um, I think there, one of the commission members asked if the process could be done through, um, through conditional use provision. And right now, Elyria's code um, does not have list of conditional use of warehousing um, in a general business district. So there's not a solution, you know, for that that uh, prior agenda item, and that's why there is a re request to do a zoning change. So that's really what we're trying to come up with a solution um, as to to support the city's desired development outcomes when there currently isn't a, a uh, zoning solution on the books that would support that. I included a map of Lakewood just to show you as an example what an overlay district would look on the map. They do have legal authority to implement an overlay district. If you look at this bottom right hand corner, you will see it's kind of a um, black grid that is placed over the existing zoning. Um, so that is one area uh, that Lakewood has an overlay district. Uh, and then there is another one, it's really little along Detroit. Um, uh, we can certainly share their language, but just as an example to, to illustrate what this would look like um, on a zoning map. So the question is, is the next question is, is how does, um, how do we adopt an overlay district if this is something? that the city is interested in, in pursuing. Um, the first is that it requires an amendment to the code. Um, as we discussed in the, the previous agenda item, the current municipal code does not have any pro provision or guidance as to how to uh, uh, implement an overlay district. So the first step in the process is that we have to amend code language um, and going through that process at the city 
we especially when we're dealing with zoning that that requires review and comment on the proposed language from planning commission um, the desired would be to have a recommendation of the amendment to council and then council would go through its uh its process of um approving that subject to public notices and public hearings but this the the general step is to first amend the code and then once you have the authority once you've got the authority in the code then the next step is to amend the uh, amend the zoning map where you you would designate a certain area or areas in the city on the zoning map to be designated as a redevelopment overlay district um, under the same process as you would go through through for current um, amendments to the to the zoning map um, meaning it can be initiated by a private owner or it can be city initiated so those are the two steps amend the code and then amend the the zoning map so well, we're not asking for any formal action to be taken today. The, I would say we are in this first step in terms of kind of reviewing what the concept is and what the potential, what the initial proposed language is. Um, and then, uh, but I know we're scheduling a special special meeting to take an initial action, but just to orient you as to where we are in this process. So um, in your packets, uh, you were provided some proposed language uh, of what a redevelopment overlay district code amendment would look like. And I'm not gonna go through it word by word, but I would like to provide um, some guidance over the intent and then some provisions that the commission should be aware of to, to um, give some strategic thought to as you're preparing uh, your written remort, uh, recommendations and report back to council. Um, the first is really what is the intent of for uh, of this overlay? Um, the intent is is kind of two components of it. The first is to uh, support the redevelopment of underutilized vacant um, blighted areas uh, for the furtherance of economic growth, vitality, vitality and resurgence. Um, looking at uh, you know, just taking this example of vacant shopping centers, um, where there is a de desire to come up with a plan that supports job creation and redevelopment where there is not an available um, uh, mechanism in your current municipal code to support that, that would be one how that meets that component. Um, and then the second is really to, to support designs that are intended to encourage flexibility, innovation, um, and creativity on site planning and development design by allowing the mixing of permitted uses and um, and or the modification of variation of otherwise applicable zone district and development standards. So once again, uh, overview the intent of this is to help um, support redevelopment of underutilized and vacant properties um, and also to encourage design flexibility um, that al aligns with the city's desired um, desired outcomes. So in the language that was provided, I um, want you to think about a couple of items as we're looking at, uh, as we're referencing to what is the base, um, the base district and the overlay district. So, uh, so ex for example, if you're looking at, you know, I can, I can probably talk through this as an example, um, even referencing back to the prior agenda item that your base district is a business general and your overlay district would be proposed to be um, a light industrial. Um, the current uh, proposed language uh, allows both uh, primary uses of both the base and the overlay. So when you're looking at business, uh, business general and light industrial, you would have uh, solved the issue of whether you can have warehousing you know, on, on a business general um, district. Um, the same language applies to conditional use that you've got the ability to uh, develop for both base and um, both your base and overlay. Um, for setbacks, we included language that favors the most restrictive set, um, setback re regarding adjacency to a residential zone. So if if you are overlaying um, a, let's we'll just stick with the light industrial overlay, if the, the overlay has a more stricter standard 
for development adjacent to residential zone, that stricter standard is going to prevail. Um, it's not a choice of either or, it's in always in favor of adjacent um, residential zones. Um, the next is with regards to parking. So the current language favors the base, um, the base zone, but I would suggest um, that the, the commission and put some thought into potentially making a recommendation um, that the parkings, uh, parking requirements could be either based on either the base or the overlay district. Um, outdoor storage, uh, current language is prohibitive. However, uh, and as we discussed in the last agenda item, the commission could recommend that um, additional circumstances with, with um, proper screening and prior approval from planning commission would uh, would permit outdoor storage when there is when when that overlay is in place. Um, the final area, which I I called other, um, is just to clarify that the uh, um, the current language proposed the overlay would only be eligible as in a business general as a base district. So there, you know, certainly we are talking about them all, but there can be other areas in the city. Um, uh, just the, think of areas that might have other vacant shopping centers that you might want to take a creative uh, approach to redevelopment. And it does not have to be as large as Midway Mall, but look, thinking about other areas of the city that are zoned business general that need some flexibility from a zoning uh, perspective. The, um, the major restriction is that heavy industrial is prohibited from the overlay. So if a private landowner is seeking to petition the city to, to um, place an overlay on a, a particular piece of property, that heavy industrial language would be prohibited um, under the, the current language that we have. So the question is, why is the over, overlay needed in Elyria? Um, the, the first is really to support a comprehensive vision for redevelopment um, and also to provide proactive development guidance. So instead of uh, private property owners looking at potential redevelopment and having to take a site through either on a parcel by parcel basis, that looking at an overlay, the city can target and provide that proactive development guidance um, to, to potential developers and land landowners about what type of uses are, are prohibited are permitted um, and also prohibited. Uh, so and, and that really that proactivity gets to what I put on the bottom of the slide. I I always look at all business decisions are made based on speed, money, and risk. So if the city is proactive um, in, in a redevelopment strategy, you are, you are eliminating time period that is needed to take through certain parcels to get rezoned. Um, and then you're also addressing a risk issue that your private development partner knows and can market properties to potential end users um, because they've got a, a, an awareness of what what permissible uses are, are provided. Um, it also allows for the mixed, uh, mixed use, both of current and future development in addressing this issue specifically of the, the, the conflict between retail end uses and warehousing in your current code. And then ultimately the goal is to really help the city compete for, for investment. So that is a high level of what a overlay district is, what the proposed language is for planning commission to consider and uh, what the process would look like through taking this through, through the city for approval. And then finally really establishing the reasons why we're, we're considering this as to opposed to finding a solution within your current zoning code. Are there, are there questions from the commission members? Thank you for that, Stephanie. So um, again, uh, I, I, would, I would wanna start with Mr. Farkas because again, this is gonna be a tool 
tool that's going to be in our zoning playbook now and um you know kind of what are your thoughts about the overlay what's important from your perspective you know she, she put a couple scenarios up you know it only being available for business general um and not heavy industrial not being an option like some of those pieces can you go back to that slide yeah that's what i'm trying to do okay. here we go I believe this is the slide that you were referring yep. to. Yep. Oh, well, my, my comments would be, I, I have attached my report and I, the zoning requirements are pretty much repetitive to my past reports for business general, what's permitted, light industrial, what's permitted, uh, the permitted accessory uses as explained in the past meeting for outside storage was a concern. Um, I will jump right to my recommendations based on what was given to me. Um, per the new ordinance language proposed, the overlay would require outside storage areas to be suitably screened by a fence or dense landscaping so that the exterior storage areas are not visible from neighboring sites, lots, common areas, or public roads. Uh, per the fence requirements of the Elyria Codified Ordinance Chapter 1137, specifically Section 1137.15, <coughs> excuse me, states, the maximum height of a commercial fence is eight feet. Contingent, the height is approved in advance by the building inspector. The height requirements coupled with the fence location regulations front and rear yard would limit the locations of the storage areas and also storage heights permitted, thus assuring the materials are properly concealed as described in. I'll expound on that particular comment as mentioned with the Walmart scenario. There are creative solutions to get around about the specific standalone fencing requirement if that is an option. But depending on the person that goes there, whatever business goes in, I guess we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, the next one I wrote is the proposal also evokes parking space requirements at Perley Lear codified ordinance section 1175 for the new district uh, as the new permitted overlay use for light industrial may alter current parking patterns, flow and access contingent upon the specific nature of the business. I'm going to defer to the engineering department and fire department for further input as the grand scope of what is really going to take place here is kind of up in the air, depending on who comes in and what the seed company does. Uh, it does create, as you mentioned, Stephanie, food for thought of the parking pattern, which what should we consider? It was geared for a multi-type atmosphere, many parking spaces where we may not have that requirement now in a light industrial atmosphere, depending on the number of people that are employed. But it is food for thought. Uh, in closing, the site is compi comprised primarily a business general district of which consists of multiple diverse establishments in and around the area. The board must consider how proposals such as this will maintain the integrity of the bud of budding zoning districts map attached in a pre-established business general district. If approved, the overlay classification would permit any use described herein. And based on the above information, I recommend the board consider the long-term impacts. I, I think this particular overlay uh, is actually gives us much, much more control in regards to what is permitted. Um, those light industrial at its core would allow certain manufacturing and whatever else comes along with it. So for the board's consideration, do uh, take that into account. That's if all I, I can have. ask you a quick, can I ask you a quick question? Um, I'm just trying to understand is, is this basically like a new type of zoning or what what specifically are we gaining with the overlay district? Is it something on top of our current zoning or is it like a different class of property? Don, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. And Stephanie, feel free to fill in if I'm misspeaking at all. Sure. Um, first, this is an additional class. So you're, you're, the boundary that we would eventually determine would allow the use of what would typically be permitted with general business in addition to industrial subject to any restrictions we would create at the time that we implemented the zoning overlay with specific parcels. So this language enables us to be able to do that. And in like the, the plainest terms of why we're suggesting this as um, a solution is because we, we have a chicken and the egg problem. We have vacant properties that need to be redeveloped. 
the vision for the city is that those be redeveloped in the best possible way that would enable the biggest economic impact. Specific to Midway Mall, that is likely to be distribution and logistics with infill, restaurants, um, you know, as you heard from Mr. Salata, to service that daytime population. This, when, when I speak with the brokers out there, they cannot sell it for that purpose because it's not currently zoned. There are, it, it means risk and delay okay. that somebody would not be able to purchase that property for its intended use, right? So they can now purchase the property with the intention of having a warehousing space there, have to petition us to change that zoning, then get turned down and say no. So it is, um, it allows us that flexibility with a level of control and enabling the speed to market that will help encourage redevelopment and encourage developers to take a look at it seriously. So the perfect, I mean, the perfect example is the request we had earlier to rezone the Sears building to um, light industrial. We're doing just that one building. This enables us to to define the district where we want to see this kind of development and have that flexibility where we're overcoming that hurdle of the traditional rezoning request. So if I'm to understand things correctly, we're creating a new type of property that kind of would would almost span both the current the the, the current uses and what where we kind of see it going with some accompanying legislation that would allow the city to, in essence, declare that entire area, this new type of zone, is that what we're looking at? Exactly. That's So correct. that in the future, this would not even be a rezoning. They would buy it. They'd have to get, I would assume, a, a use uh, a, um, site plan or something like that if they were actually working at structures, but otherwise it would be within the current zoning where right now it's not. Well, yeah, so that's, that's it. That's um, the problem we're trying to solve is the one we just got faced with, you know, half an hour ago, you know, so this would allow us, you know, to, to the, the one they, they're able to now market the site that way and say, hey, Elyria is ready for this usage. If you want, come. Um, and then uh, it gives us some control with some of these concerns we have like, hey, but yeah, we want you to come, but we don't want you having it. Like we would have already had that determined. Like here's our, here's what we feel about outdoor storage. Here, that's all laid out. So there's no surprises. You know, you can come here, but you can't put salt and rocks in the parking lot, you know? Um, and just to clarify, if I can for a moment, Mayor, um, just so we're, we're all, what Stephanie has presented us here today is the language, the first key is we don't have language in our code that allows us to do this. So the first step in the process is adopting new language in, in our ordinances that it allows us to then create these overlay districts. A second process would come forth when we would determine exactly which parcels are included in the overlay. You know, we would go through the public notification process. We would determine whether there were additional requirements subject to, you know, for the, the outdoor storage or whatever that instance would be at that time when those individual districts are implemented. I have a question. Would mixed use be, be a more attractive as a development uh, tool, a redevelopment tool in case a light industrial tenant does not work out, they have the flexibility to alter uh, if, if you know, the light industrial route doesn't work, it would be an alternative. Am I right or am I wrong? No, that's that's correct. So by keeping both the permitted, the primary uses, permitted uses of both the base and the overlay, the property owner has the ability to market both of those uses versus if you were just keeping the base, you can't market it for light industrial. If you did a complete zoning change to light industrial, you wouldn't be able to market it for retail if there yeah. was the the desire to have that. So having having the two 
the one base on top of the other kind of gives you the, the best of both, uh, the flexibility from a use perspective on both zoning districts. So do we consider this mixed use because of the way that we're, is that consider, is that essentially consider, it's mixed use business general slash industrial? Is that what I'm understanding, but nothing else or? You, you, so let, let me take- On this, one, if we were doing this yeah. specific parcel where the, the balance of the mall is, will you yeah, say- Yeah, if that? you're gonna do Midway Mall, it would be the, the recommended approach would be to have a it'd be business general as your base, and you would overlay that with light industrial. Now, the when we were looking at making a recommendation of even changing the code, um, we know that that Midway Mall is a targeted targeted site. But what other areas in the city could this be a tool for in the future? You might have in, in business general properties um, are typically going to have uh, the the mo if they're if they're blighted or vacant, they have the most flexibility of adaptive mixed use redevelopment as compared to if you are, if there, let's just say there's a heavy industrial site, you're likely not gonna ever rezone that to be residential or, or something like that for, for um, uh, environmental purposes. So that's probably gonna be, that's why, why we thought that business general, you would have the most flexibility and um, you could have the, the greatest use. Now in Midway Mall, we're we would recommend a light industrial overlay. There could possibly be other areas in the city where your overlay is of a residential component to give it more of that kind of a, 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 um, a retail and multifamily housing feel to it as opposed to what we're looking at at the mall is more of a retail slash leaning towards light industrial. So you've got flexibility, but that's on a, on a case by case basis as it's initiated to, to bring through. So you set the boundaries and of the overlay district and then you all, and then through the same legislation, you define what that overlay is that you're applying. You could, you could, uh, you could place a technology, uh, the technology district overlay on it. Um, the only overlay that is prohibited is heavy industrial because that is something that the city wants to limit to very specific areas in the in the community so if i'm understanding things right i, I think i understand what the problem is i i'm i'm trying to figure out or, or make clear in my mind how this solves the problem it sounds mm -hmm. like what this ultimately would allow us to do is have a single parcel that is in effect concurrently in two different zoning classes where prior mm -hmm. where previously yes. you would have rezoned the entire area and the properties that were existing before that would have in essence been grandfathered in under their current use. What we're basically saying is now either, either use would be acceptable because they are in effect in two different zoning. Yeah, and, and Barry, the only thing I would, I would push a little bit on is that the goal for this isn't necessarily to identify specific parcels as much as areas. You know what I mean? So we're thinking about this from a, uh, uh, like, because the mall has a bunch of parcels, but we're thinking, all right, how can we make this whole area have this overlay where the, the whole site can be marketed as multiple things? Right. So, in what your transition be... area, or I guess my thought would be then in, in that entire area, you'd say either industrial, either light industrial, yep. or general business is, is permitted so that you're not continually bouncing individual parcels back and forth. Yeah, exactly. Where the exactly. area contains exactly. both, where right exactly. now we have to bounce them back and forth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We could make districts outside of the actual mall campus that are of a different mixed use if we wanted to incorporate mm -hmm. housing and retail mixed in those areas that border this, you know, main, main property. Yeah, absolutely. From a, um, just overlay districts are a common tool that communities um, evaluate, especially with looking at mall redevelopment, just based on that inconsistent um, use of what it what it historically has been used for, and then what the desired outcome is. Um, how that's implemented, the how it's worded, just depends on two things. Number one, what the um, what the uh, uh, current municipal code is, and number two, really what that desired. Um, and uses. There's a couple of mall studies 
that that instead of doing a light industrial overlay favor more um, residential just based on the because that's what the plan is so but this gives flexibility not only to what the city wants to see out of the mall but really looking at other parts of the city as well Stephanie just a question for clarification for me and for the members this mm -hmm. just works for general business and industrial if you did do what Chad suggests which I think is great in residential with business or whatever that's a different overlay is that correct yeah well so the language of what's been proposed only allows you to have this overlay in areas that it is a base business general so if that that's what it's limited to in the language right now it, i suppose you could you could if it's a base business general there could be a proposal to potentially overlay it with a some sort of residential zoning if that helps the uh, th that particular project move forward but that would be taken on a case-by-case -case basis but the two the two main restrictions are that you can only explore this option if it's currently zoned business general and you can never overlay it with a heavy industrial zone those are the two the two main restrictions thanks it's in our current language this being proposed. yeah in the current correct think, right so that's what the purpose of this discussion is to really hear from you all, as well as we have a case study with uh, the ICP team of like, when they are looking for these sort of overlays, what are what are things that they're looking for? Um, and to take that and then take this feedback, work with um, our, the internal team here at the city. And then next meeting, we actually vote on that language and then actually have uh, potentially have some parcels identified, the mall being the, the first practice at this, to be able to say, hey, we we want we want this overlay to apply to this location, you know. So here's the legislation we're proposing, and here's an example of where we think it should be used. Um, so I, ICP, anything that you guys want to add, Jordan or Jeff, if you're still on, to kind of share about you know what you're looking for as a, just a perspective uh, developer, what you're the type of things you're looking for in these overlays. You know, this is this is Jordan. I, I, I really appreciate the discussion here. Um, it, it it does a great job. Breaking up a little bit, Jordan. And and and, and why, uh, in our case, this you're breaking up, Jordan. Here I have a question. Providing yeah. flexibility. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan, we lost you for a while there, so we didn't hear anything you said. Yeah, Mayor Woodfield, Mayor this Woodfield, is, this is, I think ultimately it just allows us to cast the net to a wider audience of potential end users and, you know, it does provide that flexibility of, you know, looking at office users, industrial users, um, you know, you commercial me? restaurant users, you know, so it commercial. definitely provides great flexibility. Um, and what about some of the restrictions that we're proposing? So the outdoor storage was one where we just had, a, again, a case study of, hey, here's, here's one of the issues. If you take it all the way off the table, it could create this new challenge with maybe, you know, our biggest concern is the, again, the rocks, the salt, the rainbow colored stuff in the parking lot, you know, things where it's just like, wow, this is not what we wanted. You know, what's your, you know, from a business perspective, what's your, you know, thoughts around those restrictions and uh, outdoor storage seeming to be the major one. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts are, I mean, we don't want noxious uses on the site either uh, because we're trying to attract, you know, a, a first rate project with, you know, quality tenants that are gonna be there for long-term um, you know, contracts and, and leases. So, you know, I think, you know, as, as Chris Salata had mentioned, we're certainly willing to, you know, abide by that language that was recited a little bit earlier in terms of the proper screening and fencing and just concealing of any outdoor storage and give the planning commission and, and the city a chance to look at that on a case by case. Yeah, it, just to sort of play off of, uh, off of Jeff's comments and hopefully you can hear me now. Yeah. Um, uh, from, I think from our perspective, and this is, this is true, you know, with, with regard to zoning across the board, but especially where um, where part of the the purpose of um, of a zoning classification or a zoning tool like the overlay district is to encourage 
development or redevelopment. Um, what's really important from the from the developer side, from the the land user, the end users side, is is some some measure of certainty. Um, and it's a obviously it's a balancing act. Um, the the city we understand wants to maintain um, a certain level of control. Um, doesn't want to write a blank check um, for for um, particular uses that could be um, that, that, that could be offensive um, or or inconsistent with uh, with adjacent uses. By the same token, um, you know, continuing to use ICP as a as the case study, um, you know, for purposes of marketing the 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 property and for attracting um, tenants, it's important that we have some certainty regarding what uses are available. Um, uh, even, even with an overlay district, which expands the, the uses um, from those uh, of the underlying zoning, um, uh, it's important to, to have conditions that are clear um, uh, so, that, so that we know the rules um, yeah. and we can make sure that one, we're playing by them and two, that we're attracting um, end users who, who are willing to, to play by those rules. By the same token, we don't wanna scare them off. Um, and when I say scare them off, I don't mean because the rules are onerous, I mean because of a lack of certainty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for us to, to, to market the property and attract users, but simultaneously say, and I'm not suggesting at all that this is what, what any of you are considering, I'm just suggesting it as a possibility. If the city were to, to say that, that they'll simply determine outdoor storage on a case-by-case -case basis without any standards, where does that leave the, the prospective end user mm -hmm. or, or us in marketing the property to know what, what will ultimately be successful? That's why, frankly, that's what, what we found attractive about the language that appears elsewhere in your code. It, it seems sensitive to the, the legitimate concerns that you have mm -hmm. over, over something like outdoor storage, but, 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 but provides some clear ground rules. So, so we know um, what, what the expectation is so that we can make sure that we're marketing the property to end users who can live with and meet those expectations, and 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 so that that we don't have to we don't have to do things in frankly in the manner that we're now asking you to do things. Yeah, so, you know, come, sure. coming in a rush Proactive. because we've Proactive. got somebody who needs an answer yesterday, um, sure. and we're going to lose them if we don't get it. Sure. Um, sure. That's not that's not your fault. No, um, I'm no, not no, suggesting no. that it is, but I think what you're trying to avoid, just like we are, is uh, is is perpetuating a situation that 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 involves that, yep. and and the overlay district with with the, the you know the clear conditions, um, clear restrictions, uh, I, I I think I think accomplishes that goal. So so what our next steps would be would be for our commission members. I want to provide a couple minutes. I know we're way over time to provide some feedback on things that you want to make sure are addressed in this language, and then what we'll do is. Um, we'll uh, put work on the language and then send a meeting request out along with, and, and, and again, let's think about Midway Mall as the, the first example of this. Um, we would then send out a meeting notice to you all along with all the adjacent property owners that say we're proposing uh, uh, a, a, over, a zoning overlay for said property um, and then have this language as a part of what's on the agenda as well. So, you know, any other feedback y'all want to provide as we, you know, because we're hoping to get this out in the next couple of days to meet our 10 day notice requirement and then have the meeting scheduled right after that, those 10 days expire so that we can vote on the language and then actually vote on an overlay for the mall. Yeah, uh, Mayor, I would like, uh, well, in the language, will there be uh, uh, minimum and maximum requirements like? You know, I don't know what a what a what a city block. I don't know what that square footage is or square yardage would be. So when we or or when we would vote, well, vote, vote on an overlay. Would that just be to the to the projects in question at that time? You know. So could you? I don't think you could say, "Hey, listen, we got two square miles of property here. We want to throw the overlay 
put mm -hmm. an overlay on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So would, it, would there be limitations or is it just going to be on a case by case basis? The may, maybe I can answer answer that to begin to begin with. So the the two standards that we have in the proposed language is when there is a a petition to uh, uh, amend the zoning map to implement the overlay uh, zone district, is that the um, the planning commission should be considering when looking at a particular area of land, and I would say whether it's one parcel or 15 parcels put together is that, is this going to support the redevelopment of underutilized or vacant or, um, or blighted areas with the furtherance of economic growth, vitality and resurgence? And then it is also supporting a design that is intended to encourage flexibility, innovation, other language that we've got here that addresses mi um, mixed uses. So that would be when you're looking at kind of the, let me go one slide back. When we're looking at this process, the, so the we're here right now in terms of adopting language right. to amend the code. The second step is when, whether it's Midway Mall, whether it's another part of the city, you are going to receive that petition in the same way that you would receive a petition to, to amend the zoning on a particular, particular property or group of properties. That when you're looking to amend that zoning map to implement the district, you're asking, um, is this in, with the intent to redevelop vacant, blighted, underutilized areas in the city? And is it intended to help support, um, support the design innovation um, and mixed use, mixed use development? So the planning commission, based on this current language, those are your current standards to give you flexibility in how you're, how you're, how you're viewing that. If it doesn't meet meet those to the commission's opinion, then you don't have to implement the overlay district. But those would be the two, the two base requirements sure. uh, that you've got to pass to even have a conversation about this. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so what we'll do then is we'll take this language, uh, we'll take the feedback we got, craft some language, you'll get a notification and we'll have a meeting on the week of January 19th to vote on the language as well as vote on specific parcels to apply this overlay. Um, so thank you, Stephanie, for putting this together and uh, thank you all for your patience. This has been a one of our longer meetings, but it's one of the more important projects, if, in my opinion, the most important project in the city right now. So. Appreciate May, the patience. For May, sure. You still got you still have nine and ten on the agenda. Oh my God, there's somebody else on the agenda. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, nobody's waiting though. All no, right. no, just just oh, okay. Whoo, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I thought I had somebody else waiting. All right, so yeah, so we have a summary of uh, applications that have been reviewed by the design review staff. Uh list there. Are there any questions about any of those applications? All right, hearing none, uh, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Moved by Mr. Aiden. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schneider. Um, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed, nay. And were there any abstentions? All right, happy new year. Thank you all again. Good work. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Go Steelers. Oh, <laughs> come on. I, got I didn't click in fast enough. <laughs>